Engine Builders Engine of the Week is sponsored by Pengrave. Precision, performance, Pengrave. Always the original green oil. L-Ring DOS Original. Leading technology, leading service. And SCAT Crankshafts. Everything for your LS engine. What we got here is a dyno room that was designed all in-house by all of our guys here. Over the years, I've used many, many different dynos, and you're always either tripping over something or you're limited to space. And I never did quite understand that, but who was I to say anything? But when it come down to spending my own hard-earned money, uh, I researched the hell out of it, and apparently there's no reason why you can't build one bigger. You just gotta have enough fan to move 10 air changes a minute. So we did that. We got two 20,000 CFM exhaust fans, so we get like 12 air changes a minute if we wanted. Uh, but with that being said, I made it so all the exhaust is off the ground, everything's suspended, uh, it's clean. Uh, the water tank is subterranean, it's 12 feet down, 14 foot across, 16 foot long. It's 5,000 gallons of fresh water. Uh, it's cooled by Mother Earth, so we don't have to worry about it getting hot. And uh, the whole thing is driven off this emulsion pump over here. It's got uh, a 50 horse uh, uh, electric motor that drives the uh, stainless emulsion pump. Looks like a big turtle on the bottom of it. Uh, it stays submerged so it never loses prime. And uh, it's clean. You know, fuel cells over here, everything's plumbed and piped on the ceiling. Um, you can work on it. You know, I, I just really enjoy the fact I can get at everything and work on it for R&D. Um, uh, some of the other things that's nice about the sound cell uh, block is what it's called. Um, we had to wait three months for that to be made. But that has a, it's like a little flow mask, flow master muffler, if you will. It's got chambers in it. It's for noise to go in, bounce around, and come back out, you know, half as much. Um, so the room was built on that premise. Uh, the inlets, the exhaust, all of them have sound cell block all the way out and all the way in to cancel out noise. Um, then you got the, uh, the dyno itself. Uh, Land and Sea did this dyno for us. Um, they had the technology available to do, you know, 6,000 horsepower, but it was at a lower RPM. And I approached them about doing something that could go to 10,000 RPM. So they basically shrunk the technology and made smaller absorbers that can take that type of centrifugal force at higher RPM. Um, since then, it's worked out great. Uh, we've done some stuff along the way. We did our own flywheel design, our own starter, just like what's in the ProMod cars. It cranks twice as fast. Um, our own mounting system. Uh, again, Land and Sea was great to work with, uh, but some of the stuff we actually just wanted because we wanted better. We wanted to have more accuracy and stuff like that, but their, their system worked great the way it was. We just, we wanted to take it to the next level. Same thing on uh, our computers. We moved everything back here, designed our own brackets. Uh, a lot of the stuff you see we designed, right? Just to make the, uh, the experience better and uh, more user friendly. Um, this particular engine that's on a dyno belongs to a good customer of ours, uh, John and Kenneth Spratt. They're in Hillsdale, Michigan. This goes on a 56 Chevy. So this is something that goes on power tour. So this is street driven and it's a pump gas motor. So they came to us uh, this past winter, dropped the engine off and they wanted it freshened up. I said, hey, for the heck of it, let's dyno it before we rip it apart, see what it makes. So we can see where the bar is at. So we took and put it on the dyno and we ran it the way it was. And even with some mild tuning to get it optimized, it made 822. So that's what it made. And then I just told John and Kinnett that basically I would guarantee them I could get them 80 horse. And they said, well, how about 100? And I'm like, well, 80 I'll guarantee. So as it turns out, we only reused the intake, the heads, the block and the crank. Everything else has been re-engineered and replaced with what we think is best for it. And currently, uh, as of even today, we ran it, um, it makes between 998 and 1,003 horsepower every pull on pump gas. So this is, uh, they're gonna be real happy with this because that's a huge increase. A lot more than the 80, I promised. So the valve covers, we just designed these four or five days ago in Anthony's office uh, in CAD. And then we sent the file over to Dave Visner. He cut them within two or three days, we had them. Got them anodized, it's got a set of our unique uh, breathers on here that we designed. 
And uh, we can take something from concept to prototype to a finished product in probably a week if the customer need me. So, but uh, yeah, we can, we can go make a poll on this right now. I'm just setting up the screen for the poll here. Okay, now, live, yep. Another few of these things go live, we can make it full. There we go. Okay, this thing's working all wirelessly right now with what's going on in there. Now we'll go to our graphing and logging, and we will start the data log, we'll make a pull. Here we go. individual engines that are tuning themselves on each cylinder and each pipe. So uh, that's the advantage of this system. So that new Gen 4 Big Stuff 3 is uh, very advanced. They're still trying to catch it. Uh, they're trying to copy the wireless stuff now, but uh, they still got a long way to go when it comes to all these different O2s and all the individual cylinders. 